Hello, this is Randy Wooden, and this is from the Wooden Desk. As I've shared many a times, I believe some of the greatest lessons that we can learn are just sitting across a desk with a mentor or someone that uh, has the skill set or the wisdom to impart something into our lives. So it's my prayer you'll pull up a chair today and something will be said prophetically or practically or empowering in a way that is going to make a difference in you or your team however you may be listening to this. But uh, we started a series, this is the episode two, as we're talking about the subject of discipline execution. <clears throat> to have the discipline and to be able to execute the things that God has put in our heart or the organizational vision ministry begin to set forth. The first thing we talked about last week was this area of being unreasonable having a tenacity that says, no, we're not going to go there. We're not going to do this. This is what we're called to produce. And I think that's so important as a great leader to have that kind of attitude of saying, I'm sorry if this doesn't please you, but this is where we're going because this is what God has called us to do. So I want to continue in some what I believe are key areas of discipline execution. But number two, is, is simple, but it, yet it's so real, is get everyone on the same page. If we are going to lead our organization or we are going to lead our ministry into growth and increase, it is going to take getting everybody on the same page. It amazes me when I've done interviews with a, with a pastoral team or do a consultation and we'll begin to ask questions from person to person, especially when we do individual interviews, you'll ask the same question and you ask them about, you know, what is the mission of your ministry? And it's funny to me that I have literally interviewed 15 people and have three or four different things that have nothing to do with each other. But that's their insight to what their mission is. I'm thinking, man, they're not on the same page. They're not in unity. They're rowing the boat in different directions. See, we have to get everybody in the boat rowing in the same direction in order to do, you know, to go where we need to go. I think that's really key. Three areas that um, are so important, I believe, to this area of getting everybody on the same page is, number one, we have to communicate what is the mission and the vision. We have to continually go back and say, this is what we're doing. This is what we're about. And if you can't do that and, it become, and it's not repeatable, then you have people getting their own getting their own thought process about how they should do it, and it's not the same. And not only that, not only should we communicate mission and vision, but we we ultimately as leaders must be role models and models of the vision. You know, if we say we're going to be about something or do something, then we have to demonstrate it first as a leader. Say this is what we're doing. Watch me as I as I move forward. And part of the mastering of delegation even is, you know, bringing somebody alongside you and say, watch me as I do this. Now you do this, I watch you. And then later I can just let them go and they reproduce in this area of delegation. But I think that's important. And then the other area I mentioned in the first episode, but it's really key to being on the same page, is the core values of the organization. Again, what are the non-negotiables of leadership in this area of integrity and effectiveness? Because <clears throat> let's just be honest, there's nothing worse than having 10 people on a team and everybody is uh, got different values. There has to be a value system within that organization that everybody marries. And what I mean, they, they become, it becomes covenant in their life. This is what we're going to do. Because if we're not doing that, we're going to be frustrated a whole lot. Uh, I think this is so important. Not only that, but in this area of, uh, of what I call getting everybody on the same page, I think we need to try to keep things as simple as possible. One of my mentors is Tom Rayner. Did uh, a year of training there and learning some things about consulting and areas of leadership. And the one thing that you know, he wrote a book entitled Simple Church, and uh, it's a great book. Matter of fact, our team years ago used it in a, in a retreat setting where we began to narrow down what are the, 
you know, what are the top three things and getting that and getting, getting what we were doing into a three prong process, so to speak. I think sometimes we're just doing so many things. It's hard to get everybody on the same page. And yet the value of a leader is directly proportionate to that uh, leader's values and how he leads. And so I think if we're going to connect people to our organization, we have really got to have that clear process of getting everybody on the same page. Once you get everybody in the boat rowing in the same direction, then momentum begins to happen. Your behavior, your actions are supposed to reflect ultimately what you know you are in an organization and what your mission is. See, I believe the process of getting everybody in the boat in your organization is so important. Not only do you have a tenacity of unreasonableness saying, no, this is who we are and this is where we're going, but you're trying to get everybody on the same page, rowing in the same direction with the mission, with the values, with the vision, and nothing is left to chance, but everyone knows what their part is in the organization. When's the last time you sat down with some of your key people, key influencers, key people that that are paid staff or volunteer staff, and you begin to ask questions. I think it's important, the pulse, P-U-L-S-E, this area of pulsing is getting a pulse of where people really are. Because I found when I shared and asked questions, I, I was, you know, sometimes I was alarmed in the sense that, man, they're, they're not even rowing in the boat with us. You know, they're doing their own thing. There's nothing worse. And I'll tell you, I just have a pet peeve. You know, I'll just share it and take it for what it's worth. Nothing worse I hate is giving somebody my influence only for them to do their own thing in my organization. I'm going to tell you, that's just not tolerated. And I think we have to realize is sometimes there is behavior and actions that are taking place on our team that are not on the same page. And we have to deal with it. Now, is that easy? No, that's not easy. Conflict is never easy. Confrontation is even harder. But the sense of coming into a setting, say, hey, man, I really care about you. You're a part of, you're a part of the team, but I have concerns. Let's talk about this. Evaluate it. I think this is important. So what is that area that everybody is on the same page? <clears throat> Nordstrom's used to be a big department store, a little bit expensive for probably for my blood, but the thing is, man, I had one of the people in the church who worked there, <clears throat> and they were sharing, they were in management, and they were sharing uh, that their basic mission was elite service. You know, the simple and powerful way to, to achieve success within that organization is they had a one-page guide that they all had to memorize. And basically, they were to be an upscale service giving great service 100% of the time. That was kind of their slogan at that time. And um, they said there were four things that uh, that they said in that, in that manual or in that one-page thing. It was number one. The number one goal was to give excellent, um, to give excellent uh, customer service. Another one was to use good judgment and achievement. Another one was people are uh, the reason we are here. And the fourth one was, uh, there is no other rules. I mean, they they brought excellence up into a high area. And I think that, that is so important for us, that there comes a time when we're getting everybody on the same page and rowing in the same direction. And I'm going to tell you, when that begins to happen, it's an exciting place to be. People are rooting each other on, there's celebration taking place. But uh, I, I think that we have to be willing, again, to be that person is unreasonable to be that person in the area that says we're going to all get on the same page. And it may be that the work at the beginning of this year is that you get everybody on the same page by interviewing them and talking with them and, and saying, okay, this is, well, there's some people who may need to get off of the boat. You know, the, the, you know, the, one of the hardest things I ever did as far as doing what I did was letting an employee go or a staff member go because they weren't a fit or because they were rowing in a whole different direction and had to have that discussion with them. Sometimes that's hard because we have empathy and I care. And usually even when I would release somebody, I would release them with a three month severance and try to treat them because I knew that this was affecting their family. But what I realized in the essence of this is that we 
have to have discipline execution in everything we do. The third thing in this, in the keys to this area of discipline execution is also pay attention. Pay attention to how things are being done day by day and week by week. And the basis is that you have to pay attention to what is happening within your organization and the people that are there. Now, we have to stick with things and pay attention to our organization's effectiveness and ultimately be an encouragement and have evaluation in place in order to be able to have this thing of, uh, of, of where we really are. You know, sometimes, I'll just be honest, we give a real fake view and sometimes verbally say, we're, this is who we are and this is what's happening. But when you really begin to pay attention day by day, um, it, it's not real. It, it's not really what's happening. There isn't the effectiveness, you know. And so wh what do we do? We, we have to ask the question, am I doing everything I need, not only to get everybody on the same page, but am I doing everything I can to pay attention to the people that are around me? Now, this takes time. This takes finding out what is the bar. Where do I need to raise the bar in order for people to be at the place of expectation? You know, one of the worst things is, you know, I did an earlier lesson a few months ago on that thing of expectation. If we have low expectations, it's not going to be hard for people to arrive at that place. But if our expectations are here, how do we monitor those expectations? Have we verbally uh, shared those expectations? Have we done the things we're supposed to do? You see, when I think about this, I think as a leader, our part of our job is always to be, and I, I always talk about four things that a leader is doing and not only getting everybody on the same page, but monitoring what's going on is a leader's job is recruiting people, is training people, is appreciating them, letting them know they're doing a good job and then evaluating them and paying attention to what they're doing day by day. If there's no evaluation system put, now yearly I always did some kind of evaluation, sit down, how's things going, ask some questions, but there are times when you're in a real crunch of being able to produce some things and having maybe a lot of new folks, it may be you have to come in regularly and, and evaluate are they hearing what I'm saying? Are they doing what the mission is all about? Are, you know, these are things that are so important. And this is even where key systems come in place is the systems running like they should. You know, uh, I've said in church, um, of course, I was a pastor for 36 years and uh, done a lot of training as well as just uh, being, in the, being in the trenches, so to speak. I realized how important it was to have the area of, of discerning where everything was. But part of, you know, I, I came to the realization years ago, I went into an ICU unit. And uh, I remember the loved one, I was there to pray for them and to minister to the family. But I, I, was, I was going to school during that time and taking an extension course through four. And it was dealing with church systems and dealing with the systems that need to be in an organization in order for it to have health and, and to be able to monitor it pro properly. But I really realized standing in that ICU unit that day, as I was looking at all the monitors that were supporting the life of the body of the person that was in bed, they were actually on a ventilator, so it was breathing for them. There was there was, a, there was a monitor there told what is the oxygen level, another monitor, what was the heart rate, and on and on. All of these different monitors were systems that were monitoring the body. Now, I, I want to use that practically in the sense that in our organization or the body of Christ or the church, I think it's so important for us to have systems in place that we can monitor. Uh, I'll use one system, might be a congregational care system. Are people being cared for properly? Do we have people who are reaching out to the shut-ins or reaching out to someone when is when they're in the hospital and they're offering prayer and encouragement during that time? Uh, another one is an administrative system within any organization. There is an administration hub 
And within this, there's processes of communication and budgets and accountability and, and data and software and all the things that go within that. But the thing that's so amazing to me is that we're not aware of the systems or how they work. So how can we how can we basically evaluate them? So I, I do think that it's so important for us not only to have that attitude that says, I'm unreasonable, this is who we are going to be, not only to have the attitude in this area that we're talking about of, uh, of getting everybody on the same page, but then this area of paying attention. I, I just want to tell somebody, pay attention to what's going on in the organization and the people around you. You know, I, I learned what you do in organization and what you do, especially if you're the head leader of a ministry, it's not about you. It's about all the people and your part in imparting everything they need. I always say, how can I resource you? What's something I can give you to make you, uh, not only make you the best leader, but give you what you can, give you whatever you need to succeed. But ultimately being able to get the pulse and say, um, I'm going to listen and I'm going to do my best to understand where you're at, it, you know, in this area. And then number four. And then I'm going to finish up in the third episode, hopefully this, this uh, whole lecture on discipline execution is number four, is be constructively intolerant about performance and behavior related to discipline execution every time. I want to say that again. Be constructively intolerant about performance and behavior related to discipline execution every time. Now, when I say that, I'm talking about bad attitudes. I'm talking about actions and behavior. We have to decide this is what we are and what God wants us to be and not settle for anything less. I really believe when we settle, we lower the bar. You know, I think it's really important. You know, sometimes a football coach will be yelling out the orders. He'll, you know, it's like the coach who's who's this yelling out, you dumb person or you dumb receiver, you did this and you begin to, you, he just downgrades them. And then there's the kind of coach who goes out to talk to the receiver and tells him what he did wrong and, uh, and begins to talk through the process of making him the better player. I, I think this is so important in us holding people accountable to their attitudes and actions within our organization. You want to know the reason why many people never succeed or are never going to succeed in becoming what God has ordained them is they put people around them that have poor behaviors, poor attitudes, and they themselves are never held accountable. Wow. John Wooden, <clears throat> I read one of his books. He's a great football coach, one of the legendaries, so to speak, in the UCL, UCLA basketball team. He won over 10 championships in the NCAA history. That's pretty cool. But ultimately, he was one of those who had that thing of constructive intolerance with his players and what they wanted in order to accomplish their team goals and winning. Bill Walton was one of the great players that played during that time, and Bill Walton became the player of the year and he came in practice on the first day of the second year after he had become the uh, after he had become the player of the year, and he came in the practice with real long hair. Wooden addressed him, and Bill said, "Well, I have the right to express myself any way I want to." He said, "If I want long hair, I can wear long hair and a beard." And John Wooden said, "Well, I agree. You have a right to express yourself." any way you want to, but we're sure going to miss you at UCLA. Well, Bill Walton went and got a haircut and trimmed his beard. Why? Because that was a non-negotiable with his coach. See, I don't know why it is, why confrontation is so hard. But sometimes, you know, some people are not meeting expectation or are not doing what we want to do just simply because we're not having that honest discussion with them. It doesn't have to be threatening and it doesn't have to be dominant and say, oh, I'm the boss and you're going to do what I tell you to do. You know, if you have to have that kind of, if you have to have that kind of uh, relationship with somebody, then you're in trouble and your leadership 
temperament is really out of sorts because I believe we can sit down and, as I've said it a hundred times, we can talk through anything with the love of God and with understanding. It doesn't mean sometimes it's going to be easy. It doesn't mean sometimes you're not going to have to make hard decisions. Well, what I realize is in this discipline execution that we have to have a part of the process and the vision of our lives and our organizations. Um, wow. How well are you doing this? You know, how well are you doing this? Are you a part of this area of being disciplined and executing the things you know God has ordained you to execute? I do appreciate you staying with me during this lecture. We're going to come to the last episode. And I really want you to stay with me, but I hope this is being a help to you. Maybe some hard choices are going to have to be made. Maybe some meetings are going to be need to be scheduled. But I say, don't put it off. Do it today. Don't procrastinate because there is great things ahead for you. My prayer is that the kingdom of God be enlarged in you and around you in everything you do. God bless and have a great day.